the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Exciting times because we have AL0, a Leafium mining mini beast overclocks from PB Farmer. So I have already kind of prepped this AL0. I've done tons of videos like this. If you haven't done a prep on a KS0 Pro or KS0 Ultra for overclocks, it's gonna be the same, but the only thing I'd say is I don't recommend changing out the thermal paste or changing out the thermal pads because in the past few models, the chips wanna run hot on these things and the thermal paste and thermal pads just cools down the chips and you don't want that. So what I've done is all I've done is I've taken off the end plates here. There's four screws to take off the end plates on each side of the AL0. If you take this thing apart or overclock it, you're gonna void your warranty, don't forget that. Um, so do this all at your own risk. But also I am going to show you really quick, I took off six screws on the back plate of this AL0. Be careful when you're prying it open, not to damage the thermal paste. If you wanna keep it, like I said, I don't, I'm not gonna bother replacing it. All I've done is stuck some copper heat sinks on the power stages. The only reason why I have two different types is because I had these laying around, so I just used what I had laying around. I would not recommend doing two different types, but for now, this will work. I just wanted to get this video out there for you guys, and I wanted to get this thing overclocked as soon as possible um, because the rewards started dropping very rapidly on the AL zeros. I just did a video on that the other day too. Anyway, this is what I recommend. Just put copper heat sinks on the power stages, leave the thermal pads that you see lined up here and here, and leave the thermal paste alone. And if you wanna see how to do all of it step by step, you can check out this video right here, I'll show on the screen. I'm gonna be using this very cool power supply unit that uh, is very easy to put together. I did a whole video on this, I'll show it on the screen as well. I recommend this, you can get it um, from Amazon. I'll leave the links in the description of the video and check out the video where I show you how to build this, it's super easy. All you do is wire up a barrel plug, 5.5 by 2.5, there you go. And then just an extension cord right there, super easy. And you can adjust the voltage, I've got mine set to almost 20 volts, like 19 to 20 volts is a stock power supply. But this can take three stock AL zeros or two overclocked AL zeros because it's 480 watts. So check out that video. I'm gonna use a meter box power meter to watch my power consumption so I can kind of monitor how things are going when I am overclocking this thing. So you can get 10% off the meter box with the discount code I'm showing on the screen. So anyway, that's how I'm doing the prep, the physical prep for the overclocks on Amazon affiliate links for all this stuff's in the description. And if you want a more in-depth video on how to take this thing apart, and all the steps, I'll show you that video on the screen. I'll leave that link in the description. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put this plate back on. Um, sorry, one more thing. I do like to move the internal fans to the outside of the unit because they kind of get in the way of the airflow, if you know what I mean. That's another thing you'll see in one of my other videos. Basically, you just unscrew the fans from the outside and then move them from the inside of the unit to the outside by just screwing them back on the outside and I'll show you uh, in the next step what it looks like and that way the airflow can go right down the middle these fans will not block that airflow that way if you know what I mean so anyway the next thing we'll do I'll show you what it looks like all put together we'll see what the power consumption looks like on the meter box with the ASIC in stock mode and then we will see how much power we take by the time we're done overclocking this thing so give me a second we'll put it back together here is what it looks like when it's all reassembled. You guys can see how I was talking about those fans. I've got two screws going from the outside in to mount the grill to cover the fan. And then I've got the other screws mounted from the inside of the ASIC out to hold the fan in place. Just be careful to make sure you're, you've got slack on your wires. You'll see how it all goes. Um, you'll have to just make sure you got slack on the wires to get it all set up like this. Now I have it like laying on its face and I normally would not recommend this. The only reason why I'm doing this is to let the glue on the copper heat sinks on the power stage just cure a little bit before I fire up this fan. So I would not recommend usually having it laying upside down like this. I'm only doing that to let the uh, you know glue cure on those heat sinks a little bit. So anyway, yep. Um, I don't know if you can see inside, there's plenty of room now for the airflow to go through now that we moved those fans to the outside. So 
Now we uh, want to check the power consumption stock. It is running hot because I don't have any external fan on this, but the AL0 is happy. It's running at like 400 to 430 giga hash because it's running on the hot side. So um, right now the power consumption is about one, like 17, 120. And I've seen it as high as 120 when these fans kick back on to 100%. Um, these internal fans, they're automatically trying to cool the ASIC down. Anyway, we'll hop in the computer, we'll get a baseline on the hash rate, and then we will upload the overclocks. Okay, so here we are in the stock Ice River Web GUI. We've been running for about two hours and 15 minutes since I put the copper heat sinks on the power stages and kind of put everything back together. I still haven't turned on the external fan. I am still running stock and I just wanted you guys, you know, to see the hash rate that I've been getting. So I'm getting around 400 on the 30 minute average. Hash rate will go up and down and you're looking really more for this 30 minute average. Ideally, if you're like trying to see what your average is, you want to look for even longer than 30 minutes. But for the purposes of overclocking, it's a little tedious to wait much longer than that to see what your changes have done. So like I said, this is the stock baseline. I wanted to show you guys the hash rate and the power consumption before I started overclocking. So the next thing we'll do is we'll show you how to download the overclocks and we'll show you how to upload them into the Ice River AL0 and we'll show you how to start tweaking them. Okay, so as I stated at the beginning of the video, this is a pre-release that PB Farmer allowed me to try. If you want to download this, it should be available soon on his GitHub. But like I said, I'm testing a pre-release version. So this pre-release version is only gonna allow me to overclock 12% over the standard overclocks. Um, and when the release comes out, this is where you're going to want to download it from, or you can check in my Discord. I'll have it pinned in my Discord in the AL0 section. Um, I'll leave a link to my Discord if you haven't joined yet in the description as well. So here is the address for R. Dugan, aka PB Farmers GitHub. And then you will click right here, Ice River Overclocks. There's tons of good information here that you should read through before you overclock if you haven't done before. This is the README section check through this whole thing please read through this whole thing because it explains everything in detail i'm not going to go into deep detail because there's just way too much information here but know that there are fees will be charged a dev fee and then um, here's some known issues there's features here this is what it looks like when you do the clock offset and voltage offset now this pre-release is only 12 percent the max is 12 percent over stock so you see right here where it says 30%, 37%, this is probably for like a KS0 Pro or a KS0 Ultra. Please be aware that the limitation on this overclock so far for the AL0 is 12%, okay? So you're probably looking at maybe 40 to 50, um, you know, giga hash over stock. So just keep that in mind and maybe that'll change. And if it does, I'll do my best to update you guys in my Discord or on Twitter or in a, another separate YouTube video. So keep an eye on my channel, keep an eye on Ardugan's GitHub for new releases. I will pin them in the AL0 section as they come out. So this is where you would download the overclocks on this GitHub page. So let's go ahead and go into the web GUI and we will upload the firmware and start faffling. Okay, so here we are back in the web GUI. It's been 14 hours since I did those um, copper heat sinks on the power stages, so we should be good there. Right now, my average is 394 for my 30 minute hash rate. And we're gonna go to this section right here, firmware upgrade. Click on that. Then you're going to click into where it says firmware file here, and then you're gonna hit select file. Then you're going to find wherever you downloaded the file to, it will be a BGZ file. This uh, pre-release says PBV elf D30 AL0 update.bgz. So yours might look different once it's finally released. It might say different things here, but it should be like a .bgz file. So then you'll click on that and then go ahead and click open. You'll see it upload in here and it will say fake path. Don't worry, that is what it always says when you update the firmware with um, overclocking firmware. So once you have that in there, you hit update and it should take probably about 20 seconds for it to do its thing. Okay, and it says operation succeeded. It probably will ask me to restart. Confirm restarting the machine. Operation succeeded. So now we're gonna give it a minute 
and we'll go back into the web GUI. We'll have to log back in. I'll show you what it looks like when you log back in. There will be some waivers usually uh, with PP Farmer firmware uh, saying that you have understand and have read the files to understand how to overclock it. So um, we'll go ahead and come back in a minute once uh, this has had a chance to like reboot and do its thing, and then we'll get started. Okay, so once you go to log back in to your AL0 after it has restarted, you will get the software disclaimer like I was telling you about earlier. So you'll have to read all this, except the terms and the risks and everything. Hit accept. And there you are. You're in the PD Farmer web GUI. And I like how it's in dark mode automatically. I like how you can see your hash rate. You can see the five minute, 30 minute, two hour average. You can see your power stage temperatures. Remember I was telling you this is the important one. This green line power stage, 71 degrees peak down to like 65 right now. This is just with the stock fans. So keep an eye on these um, when you're overclocking. I don't think that they're gonna get pushed too hard with a 12% overclock, but we will see how it goes. Here's your chip voltages, chip temperatures, where your clocks are at that you set yourself. And the internal fan speeds are at zero right now because it's not really being pushed very hard. I have a USB fan just for now sitting in front of it. So it looks a little overwhelming at first, but once you get used to it, it is all very useful information. So let's go ahead and go to the section that you guys have all been waiting for is where the overclocks actually happen. So you click on minor here, and then you're gonna read this warning again, proceed at your own risk, it I understand. Even though I had my pool and mining address punched in on the stock web GUI, once I updated to PB Farmers, it went back to default mining address. So make sure you're punching in your own pool address and your own wallet worker again and another password. So do that before you go for too long mining to a default address. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, my machine has been running for a while now and I've been getting a very nice, consistent 445 to 455 giga hash on a 30 minute average. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, like all of my settings, but I wanted to show you the um, power stages. I don't even have an external fan on this thing right now. It's just the internal fans running. I'll show you those settings as well. And the max I'm getting is 85 degrees with those um, copper heat sinks on the power stages. So right now my chip temps are, they're happy in the 70s to low 80s. Like I said, these AL zeros like to run warm. And let me go back into the settings. So this is where I landed for my clock offset. I started with 25 and I started with 0% voltage offset. It was not happy about that. I tweaked it up to 50 um, and I bumped up the voltage offset to two. It seemed a little happier about that. It likes 75 and 3%, but I wanted to give it a little more juice to make sure that I have nice, stable, high hash rate. So you might be able to get away with um, different settings with yours. I probably could get away with 3% increase. It took 135 watts on 3% increase. Now it's taking about 140 watts. I'm okay with that. I want nice, consistent, higher hash rate. And 455 for a 30 minute average on an AL0, for only like an extra 20 watts, I will take that. So one thing I wanted to point out is the fan configuration. I set target temp instead of ASIC control. The defaults to ASIC control. I like target temp because I want my chip temps to be a little warmer. So I set my chip temp to 75 or temp to 70 and my minimum fan speed to 20%. These are the settings that I landed on after tweaking for quite a while. I, like I said, I could probably get away with 3% here for a little bit more efficiency. You guys need to tweak this up yourself though. Don't just copy my settings. Um, you know, don't just copy exactly what I'm doing. You guys will have to faffle a little bit and adjust things for your specific machine. So this is how I landed here. Like read those instructions that PB Farmer painstakingly wrote out in his GitHub and learn how to tweak these on your own. Um, there might be specific circumstances where you might do better with different settings. There's silicone lottery. Um, I might've gotten just, just lucky with my miner. It's, it's responding pretty well with very minimal you know, stuff on this thing. I don't have the shroud kit on there. I don't even have my USB fan on there anymore. I just have the internal fan set to this. So let's go back to the screen where we can look at the hash rate. So like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with the res these results. Um, it seems to be happy. I'm gonna leave it just like this for now. I'll watch it for a while. Maybe I'll do another video once uh, maybe PB Farmer uh, has more aggressive overclocks available. I don't know what the limitation is at this point, um, but 
if there is any way I can push this harder, you guys know I will. I've got all this stuff here to test and make this work for a higher overclock. So I hope this video is helpful to you. I hope it helps uh, if you're new to this or even if you've done this before with the KS0 Ultras. I wanted to let you guys know I also ordered an Ice River RX0 Radiant Mining ASIC. So you guys keep an eye on my channel. I will have content on that and hopefully some overclocking videos on that too eventually. So subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content. I had, I've got tons of videos like this. Um, you know, check out some of these other videos that I have on my page. Please hit the like button if this video was helpful to you. It helps out more than you know. And last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.